Well, time now for our latest dip into the Anglia archive. Yeah, we love this bit. We're revisiting our old news films to bring you a golden gem from 50 years ago when we went first on air. Yeah, well, Natalie's outside for us. Natalie, what have you got for us this evening? Well, tonight we have a report from the legendary Dick Joyce, a West Norfolk farmer who became a television natural. It's a charming little film about a day in the life of a village bobby. And as you'll see, his biggest complaint is the amount of paperwork he has to do, which just goes to show that some things never change. It's the Good evening. I come to the village of Wrentham in Suffolk because we thought you might like to meet the village policeman there. Or rather, I should say, constable. His name is Mr Barber, and he's a jolly nice chap. Come and meet him. Morning, Mr Barber. Morning. I see you're a rare gardener. Yes, it passes the time away. Yeah, there's a big garden they give you, isn't Yes, it? I often think they give us a big garden to keep us at home when we're off duty. Well, how long have you been here? Well, about seven and a half years. And do you like it? Well, very much. It's much better than town work. You'd rather live in the country than in the town? Oh, yes, definitely. What does your job really consist of? Usually we start about nine o'clock in the morning and uh, work in the office doing the paperwork, which... That's pretty extensive, I believe. Oh, yes, there's uh, these publications to cancel, like the Gazette and the internal information. There's different books to make up. Oh, about 11 o'clock, sometimes earlier, we get, I get my cycle and away I go on patrol and doing any jobs which have cropped up during the day or the previous day. We average about eight hours a day, but it varies. Sometimes we, for instance, start work at six o'clock in the morning and finish in the afternoon. Sometimes we... Uh, sort of start in the afternoon and finish perhaps the early hours of the next morning. Well, what happens if, if an accident, for, uh, for argument's sake, comes up just as you're leaving off? Well, then we'd, uh, say, deal with it and stay there until the job was completed. Now, what about people's domestic troubles? Troubles, for instance, that are not really in your book? Well, we occasionally get called to domestic quarrels. We perhaps go to a house where a man and wife has fell out, and uh, we try and sort it out, but sometimes it goes wrong and uh, finishes up that there get on to us rather a lot. So you get all the blame? We get the blame from both ways. It seems to me that you're regarded more as a friend than anything else in the parish. Yes, most of the people we get on with quite well. So you're really on tap 24 hours a day? Oh, yes. Well, you're pretty busy, and I won't stop you from your gardening, so we'll say cheerio. Right. Cheerio. Being suspected minds and domestics. It's a lot to deal with, isn't it? Humor, didn't he? <laughs> Finally tonight, he's best known as a Shakespearean actor, the captain mm -hmm. of the Starship Enterprise and as Professor Xavier in the X-Men films. But Patrick Stewart is also a fan of the 19th century poet John Clare, who was born in our region. And today he paid a visit to Helpston near Peterborough to officially open a new weather station at the John Clare Centre, an educational facility based at the poet's birthplace. Our reporter Stuart Leiths was there to meet him. Come, pensive autumn, with thy clouds and storms and falling leaves and pastures lost to flowers. The unmistakable voice of the actor Patrick Stewart reading To Autumn by the 19th century poet John Clare during a visit today to the education centre opened at Clare's birthplace in Helpston near Peterborough. His strong connection with all things rural, with the countryside, with plant life, with the air that he breathed, with the beauty of the British landscape. Uh, he was a peasant. He's known as, and he, I'm told he didn't like the title, the peasant poet. Um, uh, but his background as a, a, a countryman, as a farm worker here in Helpston, emanates through all of his writing. John Clare was born at this cottage in Helpston in 1793. He's best known for his poems about the English countryside and wrote many of his most memorable works whilst living in the village. Patrick Stewart is, of course, best known for his role as Captain Picard in Star Trek The Next Generation, as Professor Xavier in the X-Men movies and as a Shakespearean actor. But today he spoke to local schoolchildren about his love of John Clare's work and also took the first readings from a new weather station that was officially unveiled at the centre today. 
Patrick's done an enormous amount for the John Clare Trust. Um, over the years, he helped us fundraise. Um, we had to raise a million and a quarter pound, uh, pounds to match the, uh, the uh, Heritage Lottery, uh, one and a quarter million. Um, a critical meeting the, where we launched that. He helped. Well, I think I've managed to avoid making too many references to Star Trek, but I think it is fair to say that if Jean-Luc Picard were to beam down to Helpston himself as a very well-read captain of the Starship Enterprise, he'd be extremely pleased with the work that's been done here. And with such a distinctive voice reading one of John Clare's poems, I thought I'd leave the final few words to Patrick Stewart. The russet hue of fields left bare, and all the tints of leaves and blossoms ere they fall. In thy dull days of clouds, a pleasure. Isn't it? Mm. I, mind you, he could make the ITV TV listing sound quite attractive, I suppose. How does Stuart do that thing where he just disappears? That would be a great way do. to finish the programme, wouldn't it? It would be very, very good indeed. <laughs> now then, in my best Stuart voice, over the last couple of weeks on Anglia Tonight, so we brought you the stories of Houdini the parrot, mm -hmm. he was banned from riding on buses, and Scooby and Scrappy the dogs who got married. Most confusing. Tonight we bring you the pig that thinks it's a dog. Another it's confusing strange, story. but it's true. Mm. Prudence the piglet was facing a grim future until she was taken to the wildlife centre near Colchester. She's made some new canine chums. And in the true spirit of if you can't beat them, join them, Prudence is now quite happy chasing sticks and balls just like any other puppy. That's very oh, cute. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Almost made you turn vegetarian, couldn't it? You already are. Uh, right, so let's take a look at what the weather's up to. Here's Amanda.